so much for joining us for this 2013 Kids Count Report release. We have a lot of great things to cover today and some wonderful speakers. Um, I don't want to keep us from them, so I'm going to start off by introducing Gaylord Gieske. She is the president of Voices for Illinois Children. Thank you, Brenda. Good morning, everyone. Um, we would really like to welcome all of you uh, to the Kids Count Media Launch this year. And um, my name is Gaylord Gieske, as Brenda said. Illinois Kids Count is an annual look at data that examines the quality of life for children throughout the state. The report is produced by Voices for Illinois Children, an advocacy organization that has worked for 25 years to prepare students for success in school, work, and in life. Illinois Kids Count informs state leaders who make policy decisions that affect the well-being of children. We want them to make the smart decisions that set the course for a prosperous future for all. Today we're going to hear from community leaders, business leaders, and educators who will help us focus on important issues in our community and remind us that our actions and the choices we make have a real impact on the lives of children and families in our state. I'm going to begin with a review of the major themes and findings from this year's report. The Illinois Kids Count 2013 report, Moving Policy, Making Progress, focuses on 25 years of achievements and challenges in early childhood education, health care coverage, access to child care services, and seven other future policy areas. Illinois should be proud, we should all be proud of the significant strides made in several areas that improve the lives of children. Many Illinois children and adults today are healthier, better educated, and better prepared for work and life because of the policies many of us have advocated for and implemented over the, over the course of 25 years. Everyone here had a hand in that work, and I know we're here today to learn what more we can do and what we can do better for Illinois children and families. Let's review the progress in three key areas. Number one, preschool. Illinois has been a nationwide leader in expanding access to early learning opportunities between through 1998 and 2009, participation in state-funded preschool has doubled. That's important. Extensive research and our own experience show that children who attend preschool repeat grades less. They have fewer behavioral problems in school. They graduate at higher rates than their peers who do not attend preschool. And kids who attend preschool earn more as adults. Number two, health care coverage. Over the past several decades, there has been a quiet revolution in health care coverage for Illinois children. As a result of coverage through Medicaid, the, health, the Children's Health Insurance Program, known as CHIP, and All Kids Expansion, Illinois has one of the lowest rates of uninsured children in the nation. That's good for kids and it's good for the economy. Healthy children miss fewer days of school and their parents miss fewer days of work. Number three, child care. The Illinois Child Care Assistance Program now serves about 170,000 children a month. Affordable, stable, and high-quality child care allows low-income families to work and ensures children are in a safe environment that encourages their healthy development. 
Unfortunately, the great progress Illinois has made to better lives for children and families is at risk. Jeopardizing the health and safety and well-being of our children and threatening efforts to build a more prosperous future for the state as a whole. Those three areas of our greatest progress um, have experienced troubling setbacks in recent years. For instance, in the last four years, deep budget cuts have caused an estimated 20,000 fewer children um, to be able to attend state-supported preschool on an annual basis. And stricter eligibility requirements have led to substantial increases in child care costs for a single-parent family with two children at 150% of poverty co-payments rose from $85 a month to $185 a month, which is very significant when, if you're a family living on a low income. The Great Recession and the state fiscal crisis have stalled our progress, eroded gains, or undermined achievements in these and many other areas as well. And I'm now going to um, ask Brenda to come back up, and she's going to talk about some local uh, area data. So, I'm Brenda Kester, the Assistant Director of the Family Resiliency Center here at the University of Illinois. One of the things, we have great community. We love our community. There are great things that happen. Our basketball team beat the number one Indiana basketball team last week. There's, we've done, we've created great inventions, amazing things have happened in our area, and yet we still have a significant number of families and children who are at great risk. One of the things that we know is that poverty that faces children and families is one of the greatest risks for children to grow up to be healthy and strong. In Champaign County, the child poverty rate rose from 12% in 1999 to 23% in 2011. That means that in our public schools, the low-income student enrollment is 56% in Champaign Public Schools and 67% in Urbana Public Schools. Over half of the children enrolled in public schools in Champaign-Urbana are living in families that make very little money and that are faced with immense struggles on a day-to-day -day basis. Medical assistance for children increased med enrollment in Medicaid and related programs in Champaign County increased by 49 percent. While our high school graduation rate is better than that in the state, it is still only at its highest at 82 percent, meaning 18 percent of our children don't graduate from high school and therefore have reduced opportunities for their future. We have a lot of programs that have been developed in Champaign County to address early childhood, but funding cuts were starting to see some real impact and erosion in that. For preschool, between 2009 and 2012, the number of state-funded preschool program slots dropped 12%. One thing that we know is that early childhood programming and, edu and quality education is imperative for children in their future education and for them to become successful adults. We have a lot of, head of challenges ahead of us in Champaign County. Our speakers today are going to talk a little bit more about what we face here in our community. So I want to wrap up the statewide report by saying, how do we move policy and again make progress? for children and families in our state. The findings in moving policy making progress underline several major challenges that we're facing. We're at a crossroads. We need to come together and pull our collective willpower and brainpower to decide how can we do the right thing and the smart thing to help children and families in our community. We can improve children's lives through sound policies that address these issues and the challenges that face families. So now, I would like to introduce Beth Baker. 
She is with United Way of Champaign County and will be speaking on behalf of United Way of Illinois. Good morning. I'm Beverly Baker and I'm the Director of Community Impact here at United Way of Champaign County. I just want to echo again and say thank you all for being here today. Um, as much as 90% of a, of a child's brain growth occurs by the time they turn five, during this crucial developmental period, children need to be in safe, secure, and stimulating environments. Knowing this is what makes some of the statistics that have been talked about throughout the state uh, and a local level very alarming. As Brenda mentioned, the child poverty rate in Champaign County has risen um, by more than 10% over the last decade. Well, over 50% of our students in our three major school districts um, are, are considered low income. This means that every day in Champaign County, thousands of children are living at, near, or below the poverty level. Childhood poverty, especially extreme poverty, has uh, immediate and long-term ramifications on our children's development. These children are less likely to do well academically. They are more likely to experience abuse and neglect. They're less likely to develop appropriate social skills more likely to engage in behaviors that negatively impact their health and physical growth. They often start school behind their peers and have a hard time catching up. Additionally, as Brenda mentioned, family income has also decreased over the last few years as our economy has struggled. For more and more families, the option of quality child care has become out of reach. While they try to weave together low-wage jobs or attend school to boost their earning potential, or in many cases, families are trying to do both. It's out of reach because of the repeated cutback to the child care assistance program. Fewer families are now able to qualify for this help, and those that do are faced with higher co-pays. We hear this information, and, and it's easy to, to get negative uh, and feel down on our state and our local community right away, and think that nothing's getting better. But what we have to understand is that it takes time to change the course of a ship, and we are trying to navigate a very large ship here. These, these changes don't happen overnight. For those of you who are like me and you don't like to wait, you like to get busy and get your hands uh, involved and do something right away, the most important thing we can do is advocate. We need to advocate with our local and state lawmakers and state leaders to invest what resources we do have in Illinois wisely. Investing in our children where the return on investment is the highest uh, is, is a smart move and it's one that we need to continue to, to spread that message. Uh, I know Jim and Barbara may talk about food a little bit, but I liken it to teaching our kids to eat vegetables. You've got to keep putting it on the plate. You've got to keep presenting it and telling them, uh, this is good for you. You need to try it. We need to have the same approach with our business leaders and our lawmakers. The more we keep talking about early childhood and how important it is, they will begin to take notice and begin to, to make it a priority in their policy making. United Ways across the state have made education a priority. And United Way of Illinois has a public policy agenda that includes advocating for high-quality, affordable, early learning opportunities and promoting partnerships that support family engagement and improve student academic achievement. Investing in our most precious natural resource, the children of Illinois, is always a good idea. While we advocate at the state level, locally we must invest. United Way of Champaign County envisions a community where all children and youth develop to their full potential and are equipped to become positive, contributing members of our community. To reach this goal, we have chosen to invest our time and our effort and over $600,000 locally in programs that focus on kindergarten readiness and increased high school graduation rates. We're focusing on tried and true programs that uh, work with parent education, connecting youth with caring adults, and quality extracurricular programming. We've recently begun involvement in the Cradle to Career Collaborative. A few local bright spots that I want to highlight um, where United Way is at the table is where schools and business leaders have begun to look at what we can do locally to address the pre-K waiting list in our community and how to enhance early literacy development so all children are reading at grade level by the end of third grade. To have our business community and our local schools come together to talk about this issue and find ways to solve it together is, is a wonderful um, aspect that we need to be aware of, that though there are challenges, there are people out there trying to address these gaps and make sure that our children are getting off to the best start. Similarly, our local schools, our city officials, and our police departments are at the same table working together on ways to improve the future for our students. They're discussing ways to keep them engaged in school, graduating with a career plan, and staying out of trouble. Local funders like United Way and Junior League, which is also here today, can't make up all the losses and cutbacks in state funding but we can and do work collaboratively together and strategically in 
the community to make the most of the resources that we do have available. We must look through a different lens to address the most pressing needs and figure out ways to fill the gaps. On this day, Valentine's Day, where we share our love with our family and friends, we need to share our love for the children of Illinois and invest in their future. Thank you. And Dave Henry from PNC Bank. <coughs> Thank you, Beverly. As Beverly mentioned, my name is Dave Henry. I'm uh, proud to be here today to represent PNC Bank as a vice president for one of our local branches and to talk to you about PNC's commitment to early childhood development through a program that we call Grow Up Great. Fundamental to American experience is the belief that our children, regardless of circumstances of their birth, have the opportunity to reach whatever heights they desire. The surest, most effective way to provide children with the opportunity to rise above their circumstances is to create a pathway to success through early childhood education. Yet too many of our children are born into situations that leave them without access to quality early childhood programming. Underserved five-year-olds entering kindergarten with the vocabulary of an average three-and-a-half-year-old, they start school at an 18-month disadvantage and the gap widens instead of narrowing as they move into first, second, and third grades. By the time they are in the third and fourth grade, they can't do math or read at grade level. And the likelihood that they'll ever catch up is nearly impossible. Recognizing that imperative, in 2004, PNC launched Grow Up Great, a $350 million multi-year, multilingual commitment to pre-K education programs in the communities where we live and work. Through the program, we emphasize the importance of the first five years of life and provide innovative opportunities that assist families, educators, and community partners to enhance children's learning and development. To date, the program has served more than one and a half million children, particularly the underserved, and helped to give them their best chance at a successful start and a successful life. PNC has partnered with leading national nonprofit organizations such as the Sesame Street Workshop, the Jim Roger, the Fred Rogers Company, uh, which are the producers of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and Head Start. Head Start is a comprehensive nonprofit child development program for children from birth to age five and their families. Here locally, PNC Bank is proud to partner with Champaign County Head Start. PNC also is able to provide grants through innovative programs. Since its 2004 launch, PNC Grow Up Great has distributed more than $55 million in grants to Head Start and other early childhood education initiatives. Here locally, when we introduced Grow Up Great, PNC was proud to be able to issue a grant to Champaign County Head Start at over $90,000. The PNC also advocates volunteerism of our employees. PNC encourages employee involvement and through a progressive policy that permits 40 hours a year of paid time off for volunteerism. So far since the inception of Grow Up Great here in Champaign County, I'm proud to say that PNC employees have donated close to 300 hours of their time, which has resulted in an additional $3,000 grant to Champaign County Head Start and we are on progress to complete the year with an additional $12,000 to grow to uh, Champaign County Head Start. When it comes to adv advocacy, PNC is a leading corporate voice on this issue at the state and federal government levels as well as within the business community. Our regional presidents and other executives express their support through public forums, issue focused committees, and other opportunities. <coughs> Our chairman and chief executive officer, Jim Rohr, has been central to the efforts by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the Committee for Economic Development, and Pennsylvania Governor's Office to encourage businesses to take up the issue. Grow Up Great has always been about the children and what we can do to help them succeed in life. That is why in 2011, we extended Grow Up Great with an additional $250 million over a 10-year period of time to reach more children, more families and more teachers. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Jim Hires. He is the executive director of the Eastern Illinois Food Bank. 
<clears throat> Thank you, Dave. I'm very appreciative to be here today. Uh, one, because of the relationship that we have with uh, West Illinois children over the years. The research that's provided to us through uh, Kids Count and other means lead us to make decisions around what we do to provide for, uh, to fight against childhood hunger. One in four, one in four children in our 14 county service area is food insecure. One in four. That means right now, uh, I have a population of, we serve 100,000 different individuals each year. A full 33% uh, of those are uh, children. 33,000. We partnered with the Family Residency Center this last uh, four years uh, on a, our backpack uh, program research to, to, to validate why feeding children and getting them prepared for school is so important. It's an amazing thing that uh, we've, we've come this far and not made that much progress. It just keeps changing. The, uh, the latest poverty statistics show that instead of gaining against poverty, we're losing. It's income disparity. It's lack of income. It's lack of jobs. It's lack of security within families, at least to, to uh, food insecurity. We're embarking on our, our every four-year hunger study this year, directed by Andre Rundell of our staff, to fully determine the extent of what we can do as communities to fight childhood hunger. As a result of this research and other research around childhood hunger, we started two years ago, or lost two years ago, our Healthy Futures Initiative, Healthy Futures Being Children, where we focus on children and their families. Understanding that children will not have success unless they're fed. Kind of basic. So through that, we've uh, increased our outreach in rural communities through a mobile food pantry program to provide nutritious food to, uh, to families through uh, a truck that arrives on a given Saturday and distribute about 7,000 pounds of food. We have a backpack program in 25 sites now. Started in Champaign, thank you, Junior Lee, in uh, 2005 with 50 kids at Garden Hill Schools and now it's almost uh, uh, roughly 900 students. And this year we opened our first three and soon to be fourth school pantry to serving children and families within communities. That program is going to grow as we reach out to areas that are underserved and families that cannot get service for, for uh, emergency food. All this is brought about by uh, things like you know, like. Uh, kid count simply because we can't make decisions without this collaborative effort. We appreciate the opportunity to, to be involved and we also appreciate the fact that we're recognized as somebody who can actually on the ground get something done. My, my role when I came here was to eventually work myself out of a job. Uh, that's not happened. I was told Andrea that if we do our job correctly we can shut our warehouse down and turn, turn it into a paintball room. That's not going to happen. It just keeps keeps growing. Uh, again, the partnerships and relationships are what has allowed us to make make a difference, and we'll continue to do that. And with that, I'll introduce Dr. Barbara Keith of the Family Business Center. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Jim. Thanks all for all of you for being here today and our wonderful partners. Um, I guess I want to emphasize just a few of the points that are being made here today. Um, Illinois, for a very long time, has been recognized as a leader um, in providing quality early care and education and understanding the importance of providing high quality care to young children and the impact that it can have, not only on the children themselves, but on the community at large. Uh, if you watch the State of the Union address a couple of nights ago, Obama identified quality care as one of the priorities and mentioned that for every dollar invested in quality early care, seven dollars comes back to the community. So as we make these very, very hard decisions, 
at the state level about where to invest, we have to think about the long run and not just the short-term solutions. The Child Care Assistance Program that was mentioned earlier provides support for parents for co-payments so that they can seek the quality care that they need for their children. The short-term decision was made to increase the co-payment that low-income families have to make for quality care for up to almost $100 a month. For families that are struggling, an additional $100 a month to get quality care for their children, quality care and education, means that's an additional $100 that they're not able to spend on quality food that is necessary for healthy brain development. It may be an additional $100 that they're not able to spend on transportation to get their children either to the library or transportation for them to get to work. So some of the decisions that we're making right now although they seem to be expedient in order to balance our budget, in order to make cuts in a very, very tight budget, for the long run, are really hurting our children, hurting our community, and in the long run, hurting the health, economic health of our community as well. We know that there are very, very tough decisions that we have to make, but they shouldn't be decisions that are going to hurt health and well-being of our children and our families. I'd like to now turn it over to Sam King. Thank you all for being here today. It's a really great honor for Junior League to stand with this group of community partners. Junior League has been in existence in Champaign-Urbana for 80 years, and I'm here today to tell you a little bit of a story about how you can teach an old dog some new tricks when you utilize research and community reports, like Voices for Illinois Children and the reports that the United Way put forth. Over the 80 years of our service to this community, we believe and have worked very hard in improving the lives of women and, women and children. Our goal is always to develop a program that will be long-lasting and to hand it off into the community so that it will be successful. Some examples of these programs include the Developmental Services Center, the Crisis Nursery, the Community Daycare, and the Food, Pro Food for Families program, which is the Illinois Food Bank. What we've learned, what we decided in 2010, much like what Jim said, we were not making enough of a difference. Our impact was not as significant as we would have liked. So we did a little research, and we utilized the research that was provided to us. Um, we began the process of refocusing our community outreach better serve the needs of children in Champaign-Urbana. To guide us, we performed community partner interviews. We utilized the research provided to us. We explored early childhood research from the Department of Community and Community Development here on campus. We evaluated our own knowledge and our own experience over the course of eight years. We determined that our efforts were most needed in meeting the basic needs so that all students are ready to learn. That insecurity, the insecurity in food and resources and shelter really greatly and dramatically impacts how a student can learn in the classroom. In the end of 2011, we redefined how we were going to work. We had seven to ten awesome projects that were making a great deal of difference, but they weren't making enough of a difference. So now when we say, what does Junior League do in the community, we work for basic needs. We work to make sure that all kids have the resources they need to learn when they get to school. We decide, we define basic needs as food, shelter, supplies, but that also includes family support and education. And it really includes access to early educational resources. You cannot have basic needs and not include early education on that list. In an effort to reach that, our current projects include Head Start Book Mentoring Programs, League Locker Teacher Supply Warehouse, which has provided more than $350,000 in supplies free of charge to teachers, including early childhood teachers in this community. The Backpack Buddies program, which we're just so proud of. Books by the Bushel, which supplies libraries with literacy materials. But now we're moving forward. And our next question is, what do we do now? How do we make a bigger impact? And you've heard it repeatedly, it's collaboration. We cannot do this alone. We are not successful if we stand alone. It is with our community partners that we make the biggest difference. For Junior League, what that looks like, Meeting the basic needs of birth to six students and their families, 
hinges on how we walk forward with our partners. For the next two years, Junior League is engaging in two new early childhood opportunities, collaborative programs. We're extremely excited that these programs are going to improve the learning opportunities for our youngest learners and their families. We know that minority students and language minority students are the most at risk in early childhood and that that gap grows when they enter elementary school. In an order to, in an effort to work with that, JLC is heading up the development of a coalition of service providers and English language learners and their families. The goal of this is to bring our resources together to better serve these families and know that when they get to school, they will learn. We also know that the disparity in success in school starts before kindergarten. It starts so far. If you have children who have never set foot in a preschool, who have never been in an early childhood learning situation, who maybe perhaps cannot recognize their name when they enter kindergarten, the gap begins there. JLCU, in collaboration with several early childhood partners, will develop a kindergarten readiness camp, series of camps. Um, our main target are those students who are not in early childhood programs, whether they have fallen through the gaps, their families do not have the resources, and they do not qualify for state funding because the state does not cover all the kids who need that help. Our goal is that so when kids start kindergarten, all of them can do the basics of counting from 1 to 10, can recognize their name, can feel comfortable in the classroom setting. These are the types of programs we have to do. The key, when you listen to what we've all had to say today, is that collaboration among community partners, utilizing the research that is provided, we would never have embarked on this journey that we're going on without the knowledge provided by Voices and the United Way. We feel very firmly that engaging and investing in early childhood education is really going to strengthen Champaign County. Um, I hope that today as you leave, you will know that we've all had the opportunity to share our vision and be inspired by the solutions we've heard. You've heard the message over and over again. We, we have a long road ahead of us, but there is a great deal of hope. And so thank you for hearing Junior League stories moving forward. And we'll bring it. Thank you to all of our wonderful speakers. I think any of us who've been, ever had a, a long-term relationship knows that that long-term relationship takes investment, time, money, and hard work. And I think one of the things that we've said is we love our community, we love our state, we love our children, we love the families that are here. And if that's the case, that means that we need to invest our time, we need to invest our money, we need to make, do the hard work that it takes to really, truly love them. So, thank you all for being here. I hope you all join us in moving policy and making change and impacting the lives of children, both in our community here and across the state. Thank you very much.